Hey guys, it's Dan. I'm making a video today for Ted, Ted Jones. He says, can you talk about Amazon FBA, scrolling, FBA startup, i.e. first FBA shipment, learning your for, earning your first sales and reviews. I would appreciate the advice. So thanks Ted for asking. And um, the first thing I'm gonna say in this video is that I know many people who are smarter than me on this topic and who are really good at the specific tactics and <clears throat> I think different personalities um, approach things a little bit differently and some people just love getting into that nitty gritty of uh, you know different ways to get reviews and um, different kinds of ads to run and, and different kinds of sales funnels and all of that. So that's really not my personality. So I try to get around people who know more about that than I do. And so these are really big questions that you're asking. Um, they're pretty general, so there's a lot of different directions you could go to answer these. And also, especially on something like reviews, whatever I say in this video, like a month or two or six or a year from now, it could be totally not apply. So really what I'm gonna tell you, like what I did when my, my Better Me game was new, for those of you that don't know, I made a personal development board game. It's called Better Me, and uh, it was really a new, almost a new category. There weren't a lot of direct competitors, none really. There were some games that were used for sort of similar purposes. Um, but what I'm getting at is <clears throat> it's not as simple as just running an ad for a product that a bunch of people are already searching. You know, like if people search laptop stand or creatine supplement or whatever, there's a bunch of them out there and there's already traffic. So my, my situation was a little different where I was um, trying to run ads on words like um, self-improvement game, um, you know, family board game, therapy game, and kind of see what works and build on that. So what I really want to say, like the essence of what I'm saying here, is it's more about your approach and how you go about finding information than it is about the information that might be current at this moment. So what's worked for me um, is meeting smart people and everybody's got their different skill set what they're good at so I, I keep in touch with other people who sell on FBA whether that's in person or through watching YouTube videos listening to podcasts or interacting in Facebook groups or reddit or whatever your thing is um, there are a bunch of ways to do it the most effective for me have been in person uh, I, I lived until recently in Chiang Mai Thailand and there are a bunch of people there that do FBA. So um, if you're listening to this and you don't know what FBA is, it's fulfilled by Amazon. So basically you ship your stuff into the Amazon warehouse and um, they hold it in their inventory there. And when you make a sale, they ship it out. So you don't have to touch the inventory. Um, so anyway, in person in Chiang Mai is really strong because there's a huge community of, of location independent business people there. And a lot of them are doing FBA. So um, one of them actually is here in Phuket right now. So I might see him later today. I saw him a few days ago for coffee. Uh, depending on where you live, you know, unless you're in a real small town in the middle of nowhere, there's probably somebody around that does FBA. So let's see, I guess you could, you could click around on Craigslist looking for a person like that. You could go to something like meetup.com. You could make a Facebook event. Um, one thing I would do if I moved to a new town and wanted to meet some other FBA folks is I would get in some of the larger uh, Facebook groups. The Amazing Seller, I think, is the biggest one. There might be, there are some other big ones, but I think that's the biggest. And you could say like, hey, I'm in Indianapolis. Who else is here? Um, you know, tag your friends if you know anybody in Indianapolis. And then you might get five or six people to just go, you know, get a burger, or, you know, meet up and talk at a coffee shop or something like that. So that can be really strong and there, that emotional support is great too when you know somebody in person uh, it's just that good camaraderie um, if times get tough and you know other people you can kind of you know support each other so in person number one um, probably the second biggest one for me has been um, the facebook groups and there are a bunch of them if you just go to facebook and search um, you know a few of the keywords like fba or amazon and uh, look in specifically in groups. Um, you'll see which ones are big, and I would join a few of those. You might also, as you progress, you might start getting invited to some closed or secret groups that are specifically for people that 
either have a certain level of sales volume or, um, you know, it could be anything really, just people that know and trust each other that um, share kind of tips they wouldn't maybe tell everybody. Um, people share resources like, you know, books and courses and things like that and make recommendations to each other. So as things like the method for getting reviews change over time, you can keep up with that stuff in the groups. And even though podcasts and YouTube videos are, can be pretty current, uh, I mean, in a group, you can ask a question right now and start getting answers in five minutes. So I've had the most responses probably in the Amazing Seller group, um, just because it's a big group and it's very active. And then I'm in a couple smaller groups that are for people at like certain sales volumes where it's, it's not quite as many responses, but they're from people that have quite a bit of experience, so it can be quite valuable. So yeah, Facebook groups I would definitely recommend. I would think there's probably a bunch of good information on Reddit. Um, I just don't go there that often, so if you happen to be into Reddit, look for subreddits on that. Um, there's got to be one called FBA or maybe a bunch of them called Amazon something. Um, courses. The sort of the standard when I started uh, is the Amazing Selling Machine, not to be confused with the Amazing Seller, which is a podcast and he's got a website and a Facebook group. But the Amazing Selling Machine was kind of the, the comprehensive course. And everybody I knew that was in FBA that was even somewhat serious had listened to that course or what it's a video course. So had watched the course and, um, you know, a few of them paid for it. I'll just put it that way. So, um, that course is floating around. And, uh, if in general with courses, if you get the authentic, you know, if you're registered and, and you pay for the course, a lot of times there's a pretty valuable forum associated with that. So, um, courses that I've paid for in the past, actually the most valuable part to me was being in the forum because just like the Facebook groups and everything else I'm talking about, it's very current where like they might update the class once a year with new videos or something as changes happen, you'll hear about it in the forum the day it happens. Um, so anyway, I hope this is helpful for you. I know I'm not giving you a bunch of specific tactics. Like when I started to get reviews, I used a site called review kick and you give a discount. Um, it was funny because I discounted my product, but I actually still made a small profit. I actually wanted the people that were somewhat interested in my game. I didn't want to just give it away for a dollar. So, you know, I cut the price roughly in half. I made a few bucks on each one and I got a bunch of reviews, but Amazon has changed their terms quite a bit on reviews. You can't give a discount. In my understanding, you can't give a discount in exchange for a review. But of course there are groups like Facebook groups and <clears throat> uh, probably other websites I haven't messed with yet that um, the whole idea is that everybody in this group is pretty much going to give you a review because a lot of them want to be the top reviewers on Amazon and they want um, the first, you know, they want good deals. They want it to know when people are giving discounts. And uh, so there are still like basically review clubs, but uh, they have to be just more careful to um, be on the up and up with the Amazon terms. So um, I would ask in the groups what people are doing for reviews now and see maybe they recommend some other groups or um, review clubs like that because I haven't had to do it lately. I've got enough reviews um, on my board game. I will have another uh, card set coming out soon. So actually I'm interested what works for you guys if you comment on this video because soon I will have to deal with that again. And um, you know, in my experience, once you've got the first you know, 15 or 20 reviews, that's good enough. Um, it just kind of is hard to be the guy with like zero or one review and uh, try to get people to trust you. I think some people I'm sure go and read a bunch of the reviews, but I think in my opinion anyway, the, just the social proof that there are some reviews and that the average star rating is pretty good. You know, if you're like four and a half or maybe four and up, um, people just feel comfortable. That's all they want to see. It's like when you drive by the restaurant and there's nobody in there, um, it, you're just not as likely to walk in. But there, if there's even two or three tables full, you go, oh yeah, it must be all right. You know, some people eat there. So um, yeah, that's what I would recommend to you. Get in those groups, just join a bunch of them. Just go shotgun approach, see which ones you like. You'll make some connections there with people. Find some people in your local uh, area if you can. Um, check out the courses. 
Um, I haven't looked. I'm sure there's a bunch of new ones since I, you know, I've been doing this like a year and a half, or almost two years. So um, the courses that were current when I when I started are, I'm sure, different than what's out there now. So you also asked about shipment, and um, what I do with shipment lately is I use, um, I'll plug my friend's company, it's called Guided Imports. Um, my friend Sam is the owner there, and I use them for my last shipment. It went very smoothly. I've used uh, three different companies on three different shipments. The first company, um, I won't name them, but, it, well, why not? It was Western Overseas, and it wasn't bad. It's just the communication was confusing, and they, I found cheaper companies to work with. They weren't ridiculous, but they were a little more expensive than the others that I've worked with. And I just, I kind of was like getting passed around. You know, I'd, I'd ask a question to one person and they say, oh, I need to send this to so-and-so and they'll get back to you. And then it's just kind of seemed like the communication, sometimes an email would kind of slip through the cracks and it would just take longer than it should. And I just finally had to tell them like, hey, I just really want one point of contact. And don't pass, don't forward my email to somebody else and then wait for them to get back to me. It's you. I want to deal with just you. You go ahead and ask that other person the question, but then you respond to me so that I'm not trying to deal with three or four different people and people are forgetting who's in charge and who was supposed to respond to what. So, um, and then the second company I dealt with, let's see, it was My China Freight, and uh, it was a good experience. The price was good. There was very little communication. It was just like, hey, your, your shipment's on the way, and then, hey, it's there, and uh, we need payment. I didn't even pay until it had cleared customs in the U.S., which kind of surprised me. Maybe that's totally standard, but <clears throat> it was sort of surprising to me that they didn't ask for money sooner than that. Um, the only reason I didn't work with them on my third shipment are, well, actually two reasons. I know Sam, and as I got to know him better, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll try Sam's company. And then the other thing is my rep at My China Freight uh, left and went to a different company. And so when I deal with somebody at a company, I really feel like I'm building a relationship with that individual more than just the company. So um, when my rep left, I didn't really want to just roll the dice with the next rep and hope that they did a good job too. So anyway, I was actually a pretty happy customer with my China Freight, but um, yeah, just didn't want to gamble on a new rep. So um, I really haven't heard a bunch of nightmare stories. You do hear of things sometimes getting held up in customs, but um, usually the complaints I hear about shipping, I should say too, these are what you call freight forwarders. Uh, it's basically just a company that is a broker for, for shipping. They, they arrange you know, the ship, the truck. They make sure it gets from the factory to wherever it's going, you know, your Amazon warehouse in this case. Um, or you can have your factory get it to the dock or to the ship. That's called FOB shipping. Um, you can figure out all this out later. But um, some people, I usually have it just picked up at the uh, factory. So my shipping company or my freight forwarder is responsible for getting it from the door at the factory to the Amazon warehouse. It's really common, though, for people to have the factory get it to the ship and then your shipping guy takes over from there and gets it to the Amazon warehouse. So there's a few names that you could check out for starters. There are a million other companies. You could also post in the Facebook groups and say, hey, who, who have you been happy with? Um, you'll see you know, a difference in pricing, of course. And, uh, but you could start looking at Western Overseas, My China Freight, and um, <laughs> why do I always forget Sam's company's name? Guided Imports. So that's who I'm currently using, Guided Imports. And um, anyway, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, this is 14 minutes in, so I guess that's enough. Let me know, you guys, if you have other videos you'd like to uh, have me do. And I'd love, I learn a lot from your comments on these videos. Uh, I feel like I'm learning as much or more as I'm teaching. So um, let me know if something I said, if you have a different approach or if you think something I said was wrong or outdated, feel free to let me know. I like, I like to hear that stuff. So. Um, yeah, and thank you, Ted, for the idea for this video. If you guys have an idea, let me know. Good luck to you.